Hello, hello. This is Dr. P. I'm the author of the book, Cocktail Party Mathematics. I have good news and I have bad news. Uh, good news is there's no bad news. Bad news is there's no good news. <laughs> I love this line. It's conservation of zero, nothing. Let's get to the, some more serious topics, uh, especially about the coronavirus. Uh, I've been giving it some thought as to how this virus started or who did this. Is it the Chinese? Is it the Russians? Did the U.S. do something themselves? And I finally came up with a theory. This all started with one guy. His name, Roger Federer, the famous tennis player. Um, now, bear with me on this. Um, let, me, let me give you some uh, uh, background on it. Roger Federer, if you follow tennis, he had a knee surgery around February and he was gonna be out for like four months. So he couldn't play and he's got a couple of guys on his tail, uh, Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic to beat his great records for tennis immortality. So Roger's saying, what the hell am I gonna do here? I can't play, these guys are gonna catch up, break my records, the virus! <laughs> Love you, Raj. We're gonna discuss some interesting facts about accuracy of tests. By tests, I mean, for example, a pregnancy test that tells you like you're 98% sure you're pregnant when you take the test. Or hopefully, uh, um, hopefully, let's say we're gonna get a coronavirus test coming out for everyone. And let's say that coronavirus test is gonna, has an accuracy of uh, 80%. So what does that mean by the 80%? It means you take the test, the test says either you have the virus or you don't have the virus. We're gonna only focus on the piece that you have the virus. So let's assume you do have the virus, then your test says you have 80% chance in reality of having the virus or 20% chance in reality of not having the virus. So now let's see what happens when we change the population with the infection rate. Let's say we've got country A and B. Country A has a 10% infection rate of the corona. Country B has a 20% infection rate of the corona. And remember our accuracy of the corona test was uh, 80%. So here I have a chart. We're gonna look at these two rows for now. If it was 80% and 20% for the infection rate, the new accuracy rate now becomes 50% in that population. And for the one that's only 10% infected, the accuracy rate becomes 4%. So here it was telling me 80%, I'm sure I'm gonna tell you I have the virus or not. Now, in that population where, you know, it's not, it's only a low amount of people that have it, my test only tells me 4% correct. Very inaccurate. Look, you can look, also look at this one here. If your test, if you happen to have a test that's 90% accurate and your infection rate population is only 2%, the test drops from 90% to 15%. Very low. This is a little bit, uh, in my opinion, very counterintuitive. Maybe, uh, maybe not for you guys, but for me it is. Now we're going to talk about the current hot topic uh, going around in the world, which is the unfortunate coronavirus. Uh, first of all, condolences to everyone who's lost uh, lost a life uh, to the coronavirus. Uh, one lost life is one too many. Let's compare the coronavirus a little bit to the uh, to the regular flu. The Statistics I found on the flu is about, this is for each year. For each year, it's estimated about 1 billion cases of flu, 1 billion. Out of that, about 5 million severe cases and about 650,000 deaths. So the percentage of uh, death to the number of people that have the flu is about 0.065%. Uh, so it's 650,000 out of 1 billion. Now let's look at some of the coronavirus statistics. As of today, uh, this is what I dug up. About 2.4 million cases are confirmed to have the virus. And out of those 2.4 million people, about 165,000 have died. Um, they have also a stat on how many is recovered, which is about 600,000, but they don't have a stat as a, what are the other ones, you know, in between the 2.4 million that haven't died and haven't recovered. Are they in limbo? What's going on? Uh, no information on that. Now let's look at that percentage uh, that we have there, the 165,000 deaths compared to the, uh, out of the 2.4 million cases, that's about 6.85%. That's a real high, uh, high amount, uh, high percentage. Imagine uh, everybody in the world gets this, it's about 8 billion people in the world, uh, we're talking about 68 million deaths. Uh, 
So I hope this is not the case and there's some factors uh, why, you know, possibly this can be a lower. Let's look at some of those factors. One is uh, everything that's bundled as a death right now, I think, you know, could be sometimes a cause of death. They say it's a coronavirus, but that could be a, possibly the flu, smoking or something else. God knows some of these might get bundled with the corona, but we'll go along with that 165,000 for now, but that could be less. The other one, uh, number of cases confirmed so far is 2.4 million. I tend to think this is a very low number. I believe there's a lot more cases of people that have the virus that has not been reported. We keep hearing a lot of people have the uh, have the virus and they're, they're passing it along to other people possibly and they don't have any symptoms or anything. I tend to think there's a lot of those out there. And look at the country, India, for example. India has over 1 billion population. And look at how many people have reported there. I didn't check the stat. It's very, very low. Uh, either they can't report it or the info is not getting there. So I'm going to take a guess at about 10. Let's, let's increase the number of cases from 2.4. Let's say it's a factor of 10 more, 10 times more. So from 2.4 million, it's going to be about 24 million. So having said that, with a factor of 10, we're going to get about uh, 6.85, uh, 0.685% now death rate. So we cut it down by a factor of 10. That's still about 10 times more than the flu. So remember all the assumptions I made. I'm taking the fact that the data was given is fairly correct at 2.4 million. And I'm making an assumption it's 10 times more. That is, you know, that is not 100% correct. It could be higher or lower, but... Uh, is all assumptions. So with that still, the flu is about 10 times more. Uh, I'm sorry, this is about 10 times more dangerous than the flu, having said that. As more time goes by, hopefully we're going to get some more uh, accurate data and see what we're dealing with. And also hopefully we'll get some testing kits uh, that, you know, we can we can test ourselves, see if we have the virus or not. Remember when testing kits come out, the other uh, few minutes talk we did about the infection rate and the accuracy rate, that will come into play with, with those tests. Um, I wish everyone uh, safety and prosperity, and thank you very, very much for watching.